All right. We have reached a point where we're talking about bone formation. And we had just talked about bone tissues and, and cell types, right? We had said that we had the osteoprogenitor cell that is the stem cell that gives rise to these other types of bone cells. Um, we have a cell that I mentioned before, but I didn't really define, and that's the osteocyte. It's the mature bone cell that lives in the lacunae. Then I'd said we have this process of um, calcium homeostasis that depends on two different kinds of cells. We had said that we have the osteoblast. That is the cell that builds bone matrix when there is an excess of calcium ions. So when there's an excess of calcium ions, we'll talk about a mechanism for controlling this, but it's the osteoblast that's gonna build the bone matrix. Then when calcium ions drop, there's a, a mechanism for stimulating this other kind of bone cell, the osteoclast with a C. And what does it do? It dissolves bone matrix and as a result, it increases blood calcium levels. Okay, so that's those are the, the cell types and we'll come back to them later. But for now, we were talking we were talking biblically. <laughs> no. Um, Genesis. Um, we were talking about in the beginning, bone building, bone development, right? So the process of building bones is called osteogenesis, creating bone. And a sort of a synonym for that is ossification. So uh, I rarely, in my daily discussions of bone, would say osteogenesis, but you often will talk about ossification processes. And what that is, is the way that osteogenesis occurs. And that means there's more than one, right? <laughs> yes, good for you, you're thinking. So, so we have two different, two major ways of producing bone. And in both cases, you're gonna start out with a model of the bone. So remember, um, we had said bone itself doesn't grow. It's grow, it's produced as we were talking before as, as cartilage, and that's one of the ways. But the other way is for there to be a bone model. You have a, a model of the bone in either case, um, which is connective tissue. So and so we have two different two different forms of ossification in the process of osteogenesis. So the first one is intramembranous, intramembranous ossification. And this is where bones are formed from a con connective tissue model. Mm -hmm. And the one that I'd mentioned before the, for the long bones is endochondral, and this is where bones are formed from a cartilage model. Okay, so it ends up that flat bones and irregular shaped bones are made using this intramembranous process, and the typical long bones, dog bones, if you will, you know, the, like we draw, uh, those are made through endochondral processes. Now, what's really remarkable is bone building, osteogenesis, begins six to seven weeks after fertilization of the egg. It starts real early in the development of the egg. And we had said some bones are going to be made using a cartilaginous model, and these are going to be what we would think of as the long bones, and then the flat bones and the irregular shaped bones are going to use this other process, which is called intramembranous ossification. 
So if you look at that picture, we have an x-ray, an x-ray photograph of a fetus, a very early fetus, and it's, it's interesting. It's, it's that thing right there. You want to look at that slide right there. And you can see it's got, you know, pointing at the baby's head, it's saying intramembranous and pointing at his um, femur. And it looks like his radius. Um, it says um, endochondral bone formation. Okay, so, okay, so some examples. Now, we'll come back. We're going to talk in detail about endochondral bone formation or ossification. But first, let's just sort of finish our story with the intramembranous. So the intramembranous process involves fibrous connective tissue, not cartilage. And it's, it's where you're going to form the flat bones so and irregular shaped bones your clavicles your mandible and the flat bones in your cranium these are all made they all start out with a connective tissue model that gets converted into bone okay and, and so that's really all we say so and so if you think about um the soft spots, the fontanelles. So in the, the baby's skull, this is where the intramembranous ossification isn't complete. And so they're still forming, so you still have just that fibrous connective tissue there um, on a baby's head. Now, when we talk about endochondral ossification, it's going to start out as as a piece of cartilage and so we're going to start out um we, we if we think of it has to start in the middle and grows out right so if we look at that one more time if we look at this picture of this fetus here and if you look carefully you can see the bones aren't really connected so, it, so what's happening is they're growing from the center out. This is a fetus. And so early on, it starts out with a, a piece of cartilage that is roughly the shape of the bone, but it doesn't extend the full length, right? So it doesn't extend the full length. It just is, um, it's just there in the middle. So when we talk about endochondral ossification, we say there is a primary center of ossification, and that's at the very beginning, that six or seven week fetus, you're gonna be building the diaphysis, right? The, the shaft of the bone, that's the first thing that's gonna be built, and then you get to the ends, right? So eventually though, you start in the middle, the primary center of ossification, and you get this piece of bone that's extending out, and you need to, to extend more of at either end. And so long about birth, long about the time a baby is born, the bone development shifts from the primary center of ossification in the center of the bone to those epiphyseal plates, the growth plates. Remember I mentioned them in the first video. Yeah. So it shifts to the ends of the bones. And so these are what we call secondary centers of ossification. And so then, as time goes by, you're adding more and more, and so that bone gets longer and longer and longer and longer until it's as big as it needs to be, right? We said, I'm not gonna get any taller. As a matter of fact, I'm getting shorter. I used to be six foot three. I'm more like six foot one now. Yeah, we'll talk about that later on, but I'm not growing anymore, and probably you aren't either. And why is that? Well, there's a whole story behind that, but what happens is that we would said, what happened to the primary center of ossification? It got converted to bone, and then it shifted to the either end, right? The epiphyseal plates, 
and they keep adding to the either end of the bone. It gets longer and longer, and then they get converted to bone, and you no longer increase the length of a bone anymore. Um, and we had said they're no longer cartilage. There's just a, a bony line, the epiphyseal line, where you can see where the growth plate used to exist. So, so this is the process. This is the process of growing. Now, uh, uh, one final point that I'm going to make today has to do with appositional growth. Now, we were talking about growth in length of long bones. But now, if we think about over time, your bone, your bone actually does continue growing in diameter. So the diameter of your bone will continue to grow throughout life, and that is what we call appositional growth. So, and that's where the, the outer, you know, the diameter of the bone gets bigger and that medullary cavity gets bigger as well. So on the outside, you have osteoblast building bone. And if you make that canal bigger in the middle, that means you need osteoclast on the inside. Um, and so that's bone growth. Um, we're going to shift next time. We're going to shift into another microscopic look at this process, but I'm going to stop here for now.